We've toured the main floor at our retro ranch rental, and now it's time to get down. To the basement, that is. How do you spell basement? Well, if I'm your designer, I want it to be spelled F-U-N fun. And that was my entire goal with the revamp of this basement. It was, how can we take this bonus space, this amazing finished space, and turn it into something that is truly an asset to the property? What's incredible is when you look at this house from the street, it does not look large by any means. But when you experience the lower level here, you can't believe how much extra space there is. I can't believe it. I can't believe how spacious it is, how open it is, how light filled it is. And when you talk about a finished basement, it gives you bonus space. It's that extra living room that you wouldn't otherwise have. And in this case, we've tried to treat this extra living room as a media room. And I think it has all of the features you want and need. First and foremost, it has incredible natural light. One of the things this space is blessed with is two big windows. I love the basement. The huge windows, it's nice. You don't feel like you're in a basement. Look at where the light is. Like, look at where the windowsill is to my height. So when I look out, I am looking out entirely over the grass. And it is incredible the difference it makes because it doesn't feel like a subterranean space. You get down here and you go, oh, wow. I feel completely connected with outside. And you know I always want that connection between indoors and out. What else do you want in a media room? Well, having a fireplace is pretty sweet, especially when you don't even have to install it. Another great living area down here with a fireplace. This property came with a gas fireplace. What we did was we ordered a brand new log set and we replaced the glass on the face of it. So it actually looks like new, it works like new, and just with a click of a button, it is cranking the heat and it is taking the chill off the coldest winter day. Renovating in the winter in Ontario. Okay, what else do you wanna have? Well, who doesn't wanna have a wet bar in their media room? These were all things this space was blessed with. Let's think about where we started. It's not the best looking, but, but it's a bar. Is. I'd say the original downside of this space was that the staircase bisected right in the middle. And I've decided to create one open plan area here. And this is the fun zone. So we have the media room on one side with a giant sofa with a double chaise. I mean, double chaise. It's like lying in bed to watch the game or an epic movie. That's just fantastic. And then on the opposite side, we have the ping pong zone, the ping pong lounge, as it were. And the key thing that we did in this basement was actually really small. We kept the existing stairs, we stripped off the drywall that was around them, and thanks to the Minister of Exteriors' clever idea, we moved the orientation of the stairs. Wow, that looks great, look at that. Yeah, we're uh, open concept now. So now the stairs kick out and face towards the mudroom, which is an entry right off the garage. So that really helps with traffic. And the other thing it helped with tremendously was the flow in this room because you used to need to have traffic coming right in to the sweet spot of where I wanted the seating to be. And now that problem is solved. So this room lives much, much larger. The room also feels much bigger, feels way more contemporary thanks to the new glass panels we installed and the stainless steel railings. And this is something, if you have a space that you want to feel more open concept, you know what I'm gonna tell you to do. You know I'm gonna suggest that you consider installing glass instead, because now we have a see-through right from one side to the other. You know the old saying that it's what's on the inside that counts? Same can be said for what's between your floors. I'm a big, big fan of sound dampening insulation. So here's a tip. If you've got the ceilings or walls open in your home during a renovation, prioritize spending just a little bit on insulation. We lucked out and when the old dropped T-bar ceiling came down, we found the ceiling was fully insulated. A real bonus for us as we definitely would have put this on the to-do list. 
The fireplace was existing. What a terrific bonus to come with the house. And I decided to just remove the original mantle and reface it. So let's just, let's just take a look at that. Let's just remind ourselves what it looked like at the beginning and what it looks like now. And so if there was ever any doubt about, should I reface that fireplace? I want you to take a look at this and I want you to think about it. Next time you're having that quandary with yourself, this is definitely a worth doing element. And I used leftover remnant marble for the cladding on this fireplace. You may or may not remember when it was being installed. I was a bit surprised because I didn't remember choosing that, that stone. Could you maybe make the basement fireplace out of what we were using for the main floor fireplace? Oh, you did. You had enough to do both. But you know what? It looks perfect and I wouldn't have it any other way. This is an ideal solution. And what you can see about this whole lower level is that I kept with the light neutral palette. And this is very restrained use of color. And there's just a few subtle accents. The floor is a click install vinyl. And this is nothing new about this vinyl floor for me. You guys have seen me install this floor a number of times and yes, it is my favorite vinyl floor. And I really can't believe the difference it makes because when you put down a vinyl floor, you've got the durability, you've got the ease of installation, and then you can install soft area rugs over top. Why do I like that effect? Because you can change them if you change your decor, you can clean them, you can send them out to be cleaned. They add so much richness, color, texture, pattern, softness underfoot, and the overall price of installing both vinyl and wool rugs is less than any other singular solution. So this is a winning choice in my books. If you were worried upstairs that the living room is light and creamy and you were thinking, oh, Sarah, I could never live with that, I would tell you, yes, you can, because all the covers upstairs are washable, removable, and easy to take care of. But I realized some people like a darker palette. So for the media room sofa, I chose to go with a dark charcoal gray. What I like about this is it is streamlined, it's contemporary, it has a slightly more masculine feel to it, and it seats lots and lots of people. We've got a couple of extra chairs tucked in flanking the fireplace, a nice big coffee table, because if it's movie night at our house, we're gonna have drinks, we're gonna have snacks, There's always, always, always popcorn. And you wanna have a place to set it all out. So we've got both a giant coffee table and also I decided to go with just one side table. And what I like about this round table, well, <laughs> I like it because I designed it. This is part of my new collection, but it can be pulled out. It's on felt. So if you wanna pull it out and use it as a games table, you can. You wanna do a puzzle on it, no problem. It's a flexible table, but it also gives one big surface at the end of this oversized sofa. And the placement of the furniture was dictated in some part by where the television could go, where the window is located, where the wall sconces are located. What you'll notice is I went for these really funky, modern, retro wall sconces. They actually transmit light both up and down. So it creates a nice glow and some atmosphere in the room. You know this by now, I am a big fan of the decorative impact of wall sconces. And these are the little things you can do if you're renovating your basement and you wanna add a little bit more character. Think about how a well-placed sconce with a piece of art directly below it can really help add that extra custom touch. In terms of design elements in this room, I have one motif that I've repeated twice. On the floor is my facet rug, which is angular geometric shapes, and it almost echoes the pillow fabric that is on the sofa, which has a similar pattern. You'll notice that I'm often looking for that little link. I don't necessarily go out absolutely in search of it, but I never disagree when I find small links that connect elements together in my overall design scheme. We have some shades of indigo here, sort of little accents with a bit of indigo, a bit of teal. We've got lots of gray. This is easy to live with. And in case you're wondering where the accent colors were born from in this space, well, I give the credit to the wet bar. 
If you're thinking about fun and you're thinking about the media room and how to make the ultimate basement level, of course, don't you want a wet bar? Yeah, I do. This is great for entertaining. So this little room was actually here. I did almost nothing. Well, I got rid of everything that was here. It had rust paint and very simple counters to start with. And now look at this transformation. And this is truly one of the simpler transformations I've done and maybe one of the most dramatic. So I got stainless steel cabinets because why not? They're fun, they're super contemporary, they're very durable, and I thought they would add a neat masculine twist to this space. Then we needed some punch, we needed some wow, we needed some pizzazz to really define this bar area, and so check out this wallpaper. Very cool. I love this wallpaper. From the minute I found this wallpaper online, I knew I had to bring it home. And I was just waiting for the right opportunity to think of where I could install it. And look, here it is. It has found its home. It is bold, it is dynamic, it is dramatic, it has terrific colors. There's olive, there's teal, there's smoky gray green, and this just seems like the ideal pairing to our streamlined stainless steel cabinetry. And then for the countertops, I decided to go with fresh concrete by Caesar Stone. And what I really like about this particular surface is it is a pale gray, so it doesn't make the space feel too dark, but it's got more softness than going with a bright white countertop. You may wonder how I approach my design projects and is everything always mapped out from the beginning? Well, sure, that would always be the goal, but I believe in serendipity and I believe things change along the way and you have to be flexible. And hopefully that's something that you learn from following me on my design journey and in my design life because I think collaboration is key. So while the fireplace marble may not be what I thought I was getting, it looks fantastic. And then when it came to cladding the cabinetry in the bar, well, here's the tricky thing. Stainless steel is not easy to cut. So we couldn't get stainless steel gables to finish this off. And we had to think, hmm, what's the best solution? In the end, we had some pieces of leftover gable from the laundry room install that we did on our chalet project. Do you remember that? Take a look. Okay, so we married that green gable with the stainless because look at how well it works with the wallpaper. See? Sometimes just making do with what you have, working with what's on site is the best way forward. It helps with your budget, it certainly doesn't hurt the creative process, and in the end, you get a great look. This is the easy, affordable version of something much more custom that we actually did in our own city home. We installed cabinetry that floats exactly as this does because realistically in a bar, all you're really storing is glasses. We don't have dishes and pantry goods and spices. So one run of cabinets is often enough. And at home, we illuminated above and below. And this was an entirely custom creation with a custom onyx bar. But look how it works here. What I always encourage you to do is shoot for the stars when you're looking for ideas. Think of what the biggest, best, most dramatic, most custom, most extravagant detail you've ever seen is. And then think about how you can bring that clever idea home at a budget that you can afford. You've heard me say this in every single episode in this house. I love leftovers. I love when I have leftovers in food, I turn them into something super delicious another day of the week. And when it comes to leftover building supplies, I always want to use them up. I always want to find the right solution. Here in the media room, I had two leftover cabinets. They're kitchen cabinets. So we hung them on the wall directly above the baseboard, topped it with a leftover piece of countertop from the bar. And look at this, it is sleek. It disappears, it's not an eyesore, easy to clean underneath, and hey, it was free. Who doesn't like free? I wanna stretch every dollar as far as I can. And I think sometimes you may be watching thinking, why does she talk so much about the budget? Because 
If you focus on your budget throughout the entire process, you'll have enough money left over at the end that you can add some art. You can get those gorgeous pillows you want. You can get the softest, coziest throws. You can have beautiful accessories out on your table and you can really get the pieces that matter to you. The pieces that will allow you to put your own personal imprint on your home. That's always my goal for you. At one point, we talked about whether we should consider moving the staircase. And you know what that would have been? That would have just been a waste of money because the media room doesn't actually need to be bigger than it is. There would be no advantage to having longer space. I think it is the ideal size for what it needs to be for this house. But what we did achieve was this extra space, this bonus lounge. And I now call it the ping pong lounge. And we actually made our own ping pong table. We simply got a piece of cabinet grade plywood and that means it is perfectly smooth. Then we edged it with trim so it's nice and chunky. We put it on contemporary brass legs. Now these are actually dining table legs. So in a pinch, this ping pong table can easily become extra overflow dining space. Think about that if you love to entertain. Think about how you can handle those massive holiday dinners. Well, here we go. You'll have the upstairs table and then there's the ping pong dining lounge. So then we painted the tabletop white and do you remember, why did I make this ping pong lounge? Do you remember? The team found a ping pong net and paddles buried in the wall during the renovation. Looks like we got a table tennis set. Bought at Zellers for $7 on sale. <laughs> Woo! Score! So I just thought it had to happen. It had to come home and it had to find a new spirit and a new use in this new reimagination of the house because I don't know why somebody put it in the wall, but all I know is I think it's super fun that so many years later, so this was built da, 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 31 years ago. This house was built 31 years ago and that ping pong set has found a new home. Leftovers again, we had some leftover pale gray spray paint that we'd sprayed the light fixtures in the bunk room with. And so we sprayed our ping pong net in pale gray. So look how chic this is. Cause if I'm gonna put a ping pong table in a room adjacent to a media room as pretty as this, I want it to look lovely. Flanking our ping pong table, we have a pair of comfy, deep leather chairs, lounge chairs here if you wanna heckle whoever's playing, and then the door leads into the mudroom. I think when you look at this basement, you have to look at this basement and say, whoa, that looks so different. And I can tell you standing here, it feels so different. I think two of the biggest changes we made down here, because we really didn't make big changes, Big, big, big change number one was removing all of the drywall from the staircase and opening it up because now you can see from one side all the way through to the other. And it makes it feel like the loft-like space we created upstairs. And that was a huge goal for us. The other big changes, do you remember? There used to be a dropped ceiling here with the acoustical panels. And so this was our hack. I was trying to get this project done on time on budget with a really small crew and <laughs> during a pandemic. So that was fun. And one of the tricks we used here was instead of bringing in a drywaller and a taper, we installed the drywall in full sheets on the ceiling and then we used trim to cover over all of the seams. Now, you may think, well, why did you do that? Because it adds so much to the look. Look at how it's created this paneled ceiling. It adds character, it looks contemporary, it looks more elevated than just a plain drywall ceiling, and yet it was super easy to achieve. So think about that. When you look at the overall and you think about where we started, I hope you agree with me that the definition of basement or the way you spell basement should be F-U-N fun because whether this is a media room or a rumpus room or a family hangout space or a ping pong lounge the goal here was to create extra space bonus space that would be everybody's favorite destination and if you think this episode is fun i hope you'll think about subscribing if you just hit that button and subscribe so you never miss a thing that way we'll let you know as soon as we have a new episode that's waiting for you to watch thanks for joining me